everybody and welcome to Splash Studio Online Edition of course. My name is Alyssa and I'm going to be teaching you guys how to paint this lovely painting we call Little Lamb. Um, this is going to be a very simple step-by-step -step tutorial like I said on how to create this painting. Um, I'm going to go over stuff if you guys have bought a kit from Splash um, but if you didn't and just have some supplies laying around your house um, you can still feel free to follow along with the video. Um, so some of the stuff, if you did get the kit, you should be receiving a canvas. Uh, this is 11 by 14, which is also what the original painting was created on, um, but it will work on any size canvas that you do have. Um, next, you're going to get a set of brushes. Um, so it should come with four brushes. Also, a rag would probably be wrapped around them. That's going to be to dry for brushes in between different steps. Um, so your first brush is going to be your large flat brush. Then we're going to have a slightly smaller one, also a flat brush. We're going to have a large, medium, whatever size you want to call it, round brush. And then finally we're going to have a smaller detail brush. So I'm going to show you guys throughout um, all the steps of what I recommend to use um, brush-wise. But you can feel free to change that if you feel more comfortable using a certain brush than a different one. You guys are going to want to grab a cup of water. And I almost forgot, you will want to grab some type of palette. Um, once again, in the kit, you probably should have gotten some type of uh, like paper plate looking thing, um, which is totally fine. I'm just going to use a small little palette that I have. And then, of course, you are going to need some paint. So, once again, in the kit, you should have received some paint that's kind of in a container like this. But feel free to use whatever paint that you have laying around at home. Um, also, with that in mind, you can change the colors. Um, to whatever you want to be. If you want this sheep to be hot pink, um, feel free and do so. I'm just going to be showing you guys how the original was created, um, so let's get started. Alright guys, so to start off this painting, we're going to want to take all of our brushes and stick them in our water cup. Now to first start off the painting, um, we're going to focus on the background, um, which is pretty simple. It's going to be kind of a green pasture with some flowers in the background, and obviously our main focal point here is the sheep. So I'm going to start by grabbing my large flat brush, so the biggest brush, and we're going to be using some green and some yellow for the background. So I'm going to have those ready to go next to me. So it's pretty much just going to be green for the entire thing, um, and we're going to be gradually adding in some yellow. So feel free to just start putting some green paint, just solid green paint, all over your canvas. You're going to work from either left to right or right to left, um, just getting some nice brush strokes in. Um, this can be super quick, otherwise you can really take your time on it, depending on how you want your brush strokes to look. Some people with grass will kind of do more of a texture look, so you can definitely feel free to do that as well. But like I said, we're just going to focus right now on just filling the entire canvas with just solid green. Alright guys, so once you have a good amount of green and you think your background is completely full, um, since that paint is still wet, we're going to go ahead and add some yellow now. So if you would like to, if you have a lot of paint on your brush, you could definitely feel free to rinse it off and kind of dry it off. I don't have a whole lot on mine, so I'm just going to go right into my yellow. And I'm just going to start kind of mixing that in spots of my grass. You can put as much as you want, as little as you want. As you can kind of see at the original painting, um, there's kind of some more yellows at the bottom. So you can kind of feel free to just eye out where you want some yellow, make your grass just a little bit lighter. And you can also feel free to go back in with the green as well if things look a little too bright. But you're just kind of now going back and forth between the yellow and the green 
um, just getting the desired color that you want for your grass. Alright guys, so once your grass looks completely how you want it to, I would say give yourself about five or so minutes and just make sure that a good chunk of the painting is dry. Um, if you kind of kept your brush strokes pretty light and you didn't add on a whole lot of paint, then it shouldn't take a very long time. However, if you are one of those people that really like to gob on your paint for backgrounds, um, give yourself enough time to just kind of let spots of it dry um, before we do add in the flowers and obviously before we add in our lamp. Alright guys, so now we are going to move on to our flowers. Um, so these are pretty simple flowers, nothing too crazy, um, but if you do want to add some other flowers then what I'm going to show you guys definitely can. Um, so I'm going to be using my small detail brush now. And we're going to be working with red and white. So now that I have my paint in front of me, um, basically you're going to be sketching out where you want your flowers to be. Um, I will say kind of keep in mind to leave some parts of the middle open because that is where we are going to put our sheep. Um, so anything, if you did put them in the middle, will get covered by the sheep. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to be mixing up a light pink first. So we're going to take red and white. Pretty equal parts, red and white. Um, once you start mixing it up, you'll kind of see either it needs to be a bit darker, a bit lighter. So you're just kind of finding that pink color that you want your flowers to be. You don't need a whole lot. Um, these flowers are pretty small. So don't worry about mixing up too much of that pink. But then once you have that color that you want, we're going to be basically making kind of like little blobs, um, as I would say, uh, throughout the canvas. Um, so what I'm going to do is kind of pick some spots. I'm going to make kind of like petal-like shapes, but they don't have to be perfect. Um, not all of them have to be, you know, four petals or three petals. Like you can make them however you want. But basically, I'm just going to kind of pick a spot, going to make some little oval shapes, maybe one there. I'm going to have a couple connecting off of it. So maybe this flower has three petals. Go over here. This one kind of has four. So they can be kind of as messy as you want. Um, like I said, they don't have to be perfect. They're kind of supposed to be blended with grass. Um, they don't have to be perfect flowers, but you're basically just putting suggested little shapes, um, you know, that indicate that they are little flowers. We are going to be adding um, another darker pink to it and also a center, so don't worry that they look a little bit weird right now. Um, but just focus on where you kind of want them. Once again, you can put as many or as few as you want. Um, they can be as big or as small as you want, completely up to you. Alright, so once you guys are happy with um, however many flowers that you want, um, we're going to go ahead and go right on top of them with the next shade of pink. Um, once again, you can feel free to rinse off your brush, but you don't have to. We're just making another shade of pink. So for this one, we're going to want to add a bit more red than we do white. So mainly red, a little bit of white. You just basically want to make sure that it's darker than the pink that you already created. So once you kind of have that darker pink, um, we're just going to focus on some spots of the flowers. 
We're not going to completely go over them, but we're just going to kind of put some suggested marks in the flowers, just giving them just a little bit more depth and just creating some different shadows um, so they're not, so they don't look so flat on our canvas. So go ahead and kind of pick some spots you want to put them. Like I said, you're not covering the pink completely that you just put on. You're just kind of putting them in certain areas just to brighten them up a little bit and make them seem like they have more petals and just a little bit more definition. Alright guys, so finally, um, once you have your pinks put into your flowers and any other flowers that you want to add um, if you're choosing, we're now going to do these centers. Um, so if you can kind of see, I know it's a little hard to see, but on the example, um, some of them do have centers, some of them don't. Um, just kind of like how you laid out your flowers. So to make little centers, we're literally just making dots in the center of some of the flowers. Um, you're going to want to make sure you rinse off your brush before we do this. We're going to be making just a really light yellow for our center. So that's going to be yellow with some white in it. Once again, depends on how light or how dark you want your yellow. I'm just going for a pretty light yellow, so I'm going to use a little bit more white than I would yellow. Still using our detail brush, and we're just going to pick some certain flowers that we want to have center. So maybe I'll put one here, just dabbing on the center. Um, I'll put one right here, maybe on this one. So feel free to kind of just look around See what ones you want to have centers if you want them all to go ahead like i said in the original some of them how they're positioned kind of seem like they're more folded so you wouldn't see the centers so completely up to you once again map out what you want your flowers to look like before we move on to do the sheep Alright guys, now to move on to our sheep, which is the main part of this painting. Um, we are going to want to find our medium flat brush. It's not the biggest one, but the one right under it. And we're going to be using just pure white. So, I do need to grab another white real quick. But once you have that pure white in front of you, um, you're going to go ahead and we're going to be kind of doing um, more of dabbing motions um, to create the fluffiness of the sheep. So we're going to make sure we have a good amount of white paint on our brush. And we're focusing, like I said, on the center. So if you kind of mapped yours out like mine and left a good chunk of the middle open, it should be kind of easier for your eyes to kind of map out how big and where you want to put your sheep. But basically you're going to pick a point. And as you can see how I am putting it on, I am dabbing my brush and it's creating a fluffy like texture. So feel free to kind of just keep going around, start making a circle and gradually making it bigger and bigger. Um, once you continue to do this, you'll kind of see, you know, how big you want your sheep to be. Um, it can be as big or as little as you want. But just keep going around, like I said, in a circle and just map out where you want your main sheep to be before we start adding the head and the legs to it. Do keep those in mind that those also have to be added, so try not to go too far down on your canvas and try not to go too far up. Alright guys, so once you have this big snowball um, in the center of your canvas, um, you might be able to kind of see some yellows or some greens coming through. Um, I mainly see some yellows coming through mine. You can feel free to either let that white dry, go back over it if you don't like how it looks. Um, otherwise, 
I think the yellow kind of looks nice. It kind of adds another little shade um, to the lamb. So I'm going to keep mine in my painting. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we are going to start adding in the legs now. Um, another thing also to keep in mind, if your snowball, your snowball, I keep saying that now, um, if your fluff ball um, does look a little too round, as you can kind of see, there are some spots that kind of branch off. You can feel free to kind of make it a little messier too. Um, it doesn't have to be completely round um, like a circle, you know. Sheeps are very fluffy, so they got a lot of fluff going on in all areas. So once you're happy with that, we are going to move on to our medium round brush. So make sure that's nice and cleaned off. And now we're going to be working with just black. So with black, um, like I said, we're going to be focusing on the legs first. So what we're going to do is I'm going to start by doing the front legs. Um, so these are very simple. They're just going to be very simple lines. We're going to pick a spot in the middle. Um, so there's going to be two legs obviously in the front and then two coming out that almost look kind of behind it. So your first two are going to want to be a little bit longer than your other two to make that illusion. Um, so once again, you're going to start by kind of choosing middle, either right or left side, and making a line. So you're just making a very simple line, because um, once you do have that line kind of branched out, then you can feel free to kind of add to it, make it a little thicker, like it looks more like a leg. So feel free to go down as far as you want. To tall as you want your sheep to be. You can kind of round out the bottom to make them more look like hooves. And then feel free to choose a spot right next to it. Once again, making a line. And then adding to it to make it a little bit thicker. And if they look too placed in there with the fur, you can always feel free to go back once it dries, add a little more white on top of the legs if they do look a little too placed in there. So once you have those legs done, um, you can now focus on the back legs. So it's going to be the same idea, but like I said, you're going to want these ones to look a little bit shorter because they are in back. So we're going to pick a spot right next to this one, once again doing a line but not going as far down. So I think I'll stop mine about right there. Once again, make it a little bit more thick. And then doing the same thing on the other side. Going down and making it just a little bit more thick of a line. So your legs can look however you want. Um, if you can kind of see in the original, this one is more so touching than that one. You can feel free to make it look however you want. These are very, very simple legs. So feel free to just kind of go through, round out what you need to on the bottom to make them more like hooves. And then if you want and some of this white starts to dry, feel free to add some more fluff on top just so they don't look super placed in there. Alright guys, now our next point of this painting is going to be working all with the head. So this is where we find the most detail in this painting, but no need to worry, it is still very simple. Um, once again, we are going to be working with black, and we're still going to be using our medium round brush. So as long as you didn't mix any colors um, when you were doing the legs, you can feel free um, to just jump back into the black. So what we're going to do is we're still using that medium round brush. And we're going to be creating the head. So the head, as you can kind of see, um, it is a very um, almost like V-shape, kind of like a upside down uh, arrowhead, however you want to call it. I'm trying to think of a better, a guitar pick, that would be a good way of putting it. Um, but basically we're going to be making that type of shape to create the head. So I'm going to be making that triangle shape. You're going to want to go down in your painting a little bit um, into the fluff so it's not going to be this weird head floating on top. But pretty much I'm actually going to start into the fur. And I'm 
pick the middle part. And like I said, we are creating that triangle, pick, arrowhead, whatever you want to call it type of shape. So it's going to be kind of narrow going down because um, sheeps do kind of have that snout. Um, so make sure you don't make it too thick. But then once you have that shape that you like, you can feel free to fill it completely in with black. And once you fill it in, you'll kind of see if you need to adjust certain areas. Um, maybe one side looks a little weird to you, so you can definitely kind of fix that. But once again, you don't want it too big or too small. Um, it depends on kind of how large or how small you made your sheep's body. But I think this is a good size for mine. And then once you guys are happy with the shape of the head, we're going to go ahead with the same brush and do the ears. Um, so those, these ears are pretty generic. I want to say that they're kind of like a leaf shape, so they almost kind of have the same shape of like a cow. Um, but basically you're going to be picking a spot in the middle of the head, but kind of keeping up here more, um, as you can see in the example. We're just picking a spot and then making this leaf type shape. They don't have to be perfect, as you can see mine kind of curves. And then you're going to find the other side, get it as even as you can, and then do the exact same thing. So then once you have those shapes mapped out and they are completely how you want them to look, also feel free to fill those in. And that is going to be the head of our sheep. So feel free to just continue on fixing up stuff that you need to. Once again, I would recommend giving yourself about five or so minutes just letting the head dry before we add in some smaller details um, within the face. And then we are almost done with this painting. Alright guys, so once your head looks like it is pretty dry, um, we're going to go ahead and use that small detail brush again. Just want to give that a good rinse. And now we're going to be making a light gray color just to add some little details um, within the ears and your nose. Um, so you're going to want to have black and white in front of you. So it's going to be mainly white and you're just adding a touch of black to it by creating, like I said, a gray color. So once you have a gray color that you like, um, you are going to feel free to start doing the ears. Um, so what we're doing is we're just adding um, little bits of detail just to kind of show that the ears do have some definition in there. Um, they're not just this solid black mass shape. Um, and then we're going to be adding the nose as well. Um, so you can add gray to kind of wherever you want if you want to add some more kind of uh, hair details within the face or anywhere else. You can feel free to add gray. Um, on the black, it just gives it another type of um, tone to the black uh, just to kind of help bring some details out. But what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the ears and I'm just going to do some quick wispy motions in the ears just to show some detail. And then once again on this side, you don't need a whole lot, you're just showing some detail. But you're going to do that with the ears. And then you're going to feel free to make a little nose. So to make the nose, you're going to pick a spot kind of on the lower part of his face. We're going to be making a little V shape. And then a line underneath. We're just making a little nose for him, adding some detail to the ears. Um, if you want to as well, you can go ahead and kind of add some spots of gray maybe on his snout just right above. Maybe you want some kind of on the sides of his face a little bit. So feel free to add in that gray, like I said, however you want it. Um, you can also go ahead and do some in the leg area, but feel free to make that however you want to look.
Alright, so once you are satisfied with that, we are going to go ahead and just pop out the nose just a tiny bit more using pure white and still using our small detail brush. And we're just going to put a little layer of white over the nose just to bring it out so it's a little bit different than the rest of the gray in the painting. And then you can kind of tell that, oh, this is actually a nose and not just some shading that I put um, to make fur or something like that. Um, so it's a little bit more defined. Um, but after you do that, we're going to go ahead now and start working on the eyes. So this is the part where if you want your lamb to have a certain eye color, you could definitely do that. Um, in the original, it is a lighter green. So we are going to go ahead and mix up green and white. So we want to take some green, add a good amount of white to it. Um, you can even add some, maybe some yellow to it if you want it to look a little bit more of like a lime green color. So it's really up to you um, on what shade of green you want your eyes or if you want it to have blue eyes, brown eyes. Feel free to do that as well. But once you have that green mixed up, we're going to do some pretty simple circles. Um, their eyes are kind of more so on the side of their head. So we're kind of going to look at the ear area. We're going to make two ovals that are horizontal. It's going to look a little creepy at first, but we have one right there. So I'm going to space it out and do one right about here. And then you can kind of take a step back and see if you need to make one either a little bit bigger or adjust anything if you need to. And then once you are happy of how your eye shape looks, you can feel free to go back in with the white and just kind of add some highlights, um, just little touches of white in the eye before we add in the pupil just to kind of make it look a little bit more glossy. So like I said, just added in a tiny bit of white. If you don't want to do that step, you totally don't have to. But once you do have the eyes looking how you want them to, we're going to go ahead and add the pupil to the eye. So it's just going to be pure black. And we are just making another littler oval shape on the inside. So you can make those as big or as small as you want. It's kind of overlapping some of the white that I added. Alright guys, so my camera did glitch out a little bit. Um, Apparently the memory was all full on my camera. Um, so all I did was do our final step, which was adding the tufts of grass at the bottom of our canvas, um, which I will show you guys real quickly here. I'm going to be using, I used my, a mix of my smallest brush and my medium round brush. And all I did was mixed up a teal color. So that's going to be some blue mixed with some yellow. You don't need a whole lot. Um, teal is kind of a hard color to achieve. So if it looks a bit more greener, that's okay because we are putting it over grass that we already made. But you're just going to go ahead, two spots on your canvas, and just kind of pull up the paint, making suggested little brush strokes um, of a grass pattern. And you can put as many or as little as you want. Um, there's definitely a littler grass in the um, original example and I put a lot more. So feel free to spread it wherever you want. If you want to put some up here, you guys definitely can. But this is kind of the ending of the painting where you guys can kind of look at it, see what you want to add to it, um, what you need to fix, anything like that. The only other thing I like to tell people is to sign their name at the bottom. I like to put my initial on the corner. Um, but I will show you guys my final results to this painting. And I'm sure everyone else's looks very cute and it turned out very wonderful. Um, and if it did, please feel free to share your results with us and how much of a good time you guys had painting this um, during this crazy time that we're in. Um, painting is such a wonderful way to spend time and it takes up a lot of time too. Um, we have a lot of videos that are posted online right now. Feel free to go back and look at those. I'm going to be continuing to making videos from home as well, um, but feel free to share your results with us. Tag Splash Studio, we're on Facebook, Instagram. Um, all that good stuff and in any social media we appreciate it. We appreciate likes, comments, 
um, everything like that. But I hope you guys had a great time. I hope everyone is staying safe out there and have a great rest of your day.